Sir Sandra Spicer. I'm a metal sculptor. I thought it would be interesting to show some of the, the process involved in making pieces, sculptures. This piece is almost done and um, it started out in my treasures outside about two years ago. I work with found objects, something that someone else has cast away or discarded right before they hit the recycling meltdown stage. I want to be sure there's no other use left for this object. You need to be able to see what you have and be able to find it. It's also a main place for incubating. I've got lots of things that are here that I like, that are interesting, but I don't know exactly how I'm going to use them yet. Pretty soon I'll figure out they seem like they would go together with something else I have. One of the things that really interested me in this piece was the fact that it was simple, it had a really rough look to it, and it, I, I like the texture on it too. Somehow it did, just didn't work out. I tried a lot of different designs. Uh, now I've got the idea that I'm going to cut it, cut up the panel out of it, the front of it, and I will take it and uh, really be happy with looking at that piece, and it will come together now. So before I do that, I realize I have to soak it again, this will be the third time, to get the mud that sat in here when it was being used as a drain pipe. So I'm going to take this over and put it in a tank to soak because it's got lots of mud in it still. While that's loosening up, I'm going to go inside and work on some of the parts of the base. This metal shop belongs to my patron and friend, Bob Hirsch. He generously lets me use it for a reimbursement of electricity costs. This was the original base that I thought I was going to use for that piece. It, it was heavy, it wouldn't be the stable, but it was too heavy. It made the piece too heavy. And it, somehow I just didn't like the way it looked. This is the piece that I have decided to use instead. This gives it some stability, but it's lighter weight. And I had to cut this piece off of it just for looks. That's probably going to be an interesting piece to add in another piece later on. I thought this would be a good thing to weld to, to give better contact points, etc. I considered using this one, but it's way too heavy and thick. It's just about the same size, so visually it wouldn't be very different, so I'm going to go with the lighter one. I'm going to clean this before I weld, so the contact will be good. I'm going to mark it, and then I will grind it clean so I'll know what places I should grind. Then I'll have to get protective gear on. I'm going to switch to welding. We've got the metal, I've got the metal all prepared. Now, I'm going to go get the culvert and bring it and clamp it to the table and cut with a grinder the panel out of the front of it. Well, I can cut it. First I'm going to make a line so I can follow and not have a meander.
I'm noticing that there's a seam in this where the metal is probably doubled over, lapping itself. So I'm going to try to avoid that place. Or at least I don't want to damage the nice look of that pattern of rivets that it's got in there. a great piece. Wall hanging maybe. get a look at this inside and see how it really looks. Let's see what would look good inside it. So when I was designing this piece, I made quite a few drawings over the past two years and um, I want to see how that holds up with now my new idea. So this is one of the ideas that I had for this piece before I decided to cut it open was to take many many hoops and fan them out and make a, this sort of a shape. Um, I wanted, wanted to get away from the single hoop on the top of a stick idea. So another series was when I was thinking about putting them sideways. I also thought about having pieces going sideways, separate arcs attached to the base, or clusters of shapes. So these are some of the pieces that I have in mind for those, particularly this coil. Different weights, different sizes, different different looks. I'm not sure that I want to use those at all now. And this might be interesting against something light. I'm thinking that I probably want something that would have this on it. My, my all-time favorite right now is a material of acrylic that would be six inches wide and it would go almost that full length in there to be behind that. But you never know. It might just change entirely when I get it on the base and take a look at it as a whole. Now I'm going to be changing this smoothing it up, cleaning the edge so I can have a weld, getting this top part ready for attaching a bracket, which is going to be a little loop, and uh, then we'll be ready to do actually some welding. I've made this smooth so you can touch it and not get hurt. I've cleaned the edge so it's ready to receive the welding, and I've cleaned this spot up here to weld a bracket which looks like this and I have cleaned the edges of that and it's going to go in here and now I'm ready to weld.
Oh. Good. Now that I have that piece on, this is going to go over it, and I need to widen the hole so it will fit on easily. So I'm going to be grinding. This is a high speed grinder. of how this is going to look as it's finished. I'm going to try, I'm going to try various stages so I can decide which way this should be sitting oriented on the base. to have things hanging inside would I want something here would I want it at an angle or would it just crash? I'm imagining a mirrored piece of plastic hanging down and this suspended attached to this on top of it. So that'll give me reflections and I don't know if I want to distract from the what's inside with something on the outside or not. And I'll have to just I'll have to trim off some pieces and see what they would look like if they were involved in the outside or in addition to the inside. I think I'm getting a feel that I would prefer to have it facing this way rather than a square, squatty kind of orientation. I actually like the idea of a diagonal. So I don't want to get all... It, ground and cleaned in here, ready to weld, and then think, oh, I don't want it that way. So i got to make a choice, and then live with it. I think I'll go cut this piece so I can try it out up in here. That means I will be using a shear. I'm going to measure it. I might not use it, but I want to know. 36. I want to see how it really look. So I'm going to put this in the shear and from there we're going to go back to the grinder to clean the edges and smooth some things. Okay, this is a Scotchman iron worker and this function I'm using now is a shear. It also can function as a punch. So I'm lining it up where I marked it. This is helping me get leverage on it so it's nice and tight. Foot control. Now I'm moving back towards the grinder. This is a horizontal bandsaw that I often use for cutting. 
very nice for good trims. Hey, this is the grinder. It has wire brush on one side and a stone grinder on the other. So I'm going to put my gear on, protect my ears, and eyes. Try this out and see how it looks on the hook. It's kind of interesting. plastic. They cut this to my specifications. This is a piece of clear acrylic with a special mirrored backing and it's covered with a plastic film. What I'm going to do is mark a circle to match this on here. Then I will drill it The bit I use for drilling is made specially for plastic. It has a very sharp bit compared to the regular bit. So now I'm going to drill through this plastic into a piece of throwaway plastic. through. Now as you can see I've pulled the plastic protective coating back so I can sand the edges just a little bit in preparation for buffing it. This is an orbital sander. Over to the buffer. This buffer has cotton pads and it's a low speed buffer. What it's going to do is going to heat up the edge. Make it smooth. See how shiny that's getting? Okay. 
with that done, this is ready to go back from my home studio to my demo shop to be put inside the culvert. Here's the plastic, ready to go. Let's see how this looks. plastic film on for protection while I'm still working on it. These are the things that are going to go on top. This is a little assemblage of its own. It's going to hang from chain and come down to there. So I'm going to assemble these two pieces together with their chain and then we'll go ahead with the rest of get ready to protect myself and weld these places in several tack places. to weld the base. where you came in. The next step will be to heal the wound of the welding with a patina using muriatic acid and then spraying it with hydrogen peroxide. The muriatic acid actually cleans the metal, makes it very vulnerable so that when I put the hydrogen peroxide on it, it oxidizes right away. This is the uh, hydrogen peroxide. After this is set, maybe 15, I will rinse it off to stop the action. The next day I'll spray it with a clear coat just to seal it. Sort of like polishing it up. I noticed that the metal had some green paint on it that's coming out in this. It's nice. The patina is setting very well. I'm going to load this in my truck, hose the chemicals off, and we'll be all set. Strapped, ready to go.
time to stop the action. If I left it on, it'd get darker and darker and darker and darker. Nice green coming out there. Now it's time to tie this baby down. Safe ride home. I'm taking this now to my studio where I'm going to apply a clear coat of lacquer. Then it will be in the show at Wells Fargo Center for the Arts where Art Trails is having a preview exhibit. I named this piece Reflective Sentry. I like the idea of uh, the power and the patterns that the reflections showed. I especially get excited when the piece sells and I get to see it in its new home. I'm continuously planning and making new pieces. You can see them all on my website, susandrasculpts.com.